in today's DaVinci Resolve tutorial, we're gonna be going over a whole bunch of advanced color techniques. So let's fire up DaVinci Resolve and hop into it. So the way that I'm gonna be doing this is with the color managed workflow and my color is DaVinci YRGB color managed Rec 709 and then I'm using Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. If you're using a Mac, make sure that you click Rec 709A instead of Gamma 2.4. That will be the profile that you'll probably need for your monitor, whereas my monitor is a Gamma 2.4. Make sure you go into your footage, grab all of your footage, and what you're gonna wanna do is right click and go down to input color space and then put in the color space that you used on that shoot. And so this is the image that it gives us right off the bat, which actually is a pretty good looking image. And here is the node tree that I'm gonna be creating today. We're mostly focusing on two things today, saturation and an advanced technique that I use to create glow to give me a very soft looking image, but also keeping the image decently sharp. So let's go ahead and just turn on this grade and you can see what it's doing. We're making sure that we have nice bright whites in the background. We have very, very soft skin tones over here. And the image feels sharp, but it also has this kind of soft, dreamy glow to it. If you want this no treat, you can go ahead and just grab it in the description below. I will have a link to it down there for you. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm really quickly just gonna save this and let's just delete all of these nodes and we're back to square one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create some nodes and how I'm doing this is just pressing Alt S. The first advanced tool that I talked about is gonna be the saturation. And this is the way that I like to do saturation. You can use the saturation wheel down here, but it's really not the most effective tool to use. So what we're gonna do is come up here and we're gonna grab these two nodes and we're gonna name both of these saturation. I'm actually gonna call this DSAT. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change these nodes so that we can use the wheels as our saturation instead of just the normal saturation slider. And the reason why I'm doing that is that when I add saturation just with this node right here, what is actually happening, it's also adding luminance and not just saturation. So that's why we're gonna be doing it on the nodes over here because that way we can add saturation while maintaining the same luminance. What I'm gonna do is just click this, right click, head down to color space, change this over to HSV, hue, saturation, and value. And on the DSAT node, I'm gonna change this over to HSL, okay? And now we're just gonna go ahead and turn off the red channel and the blue channel and just keep the green channel for both of these nodes. So now that we've done that, if we come down here on our saturation wheel, now when I pump it into it, I get a much softer saturation that is not increasing my luminance value. And I can actually push that pretty hard and maintain pretty good saturation levels. First thing that I need to do is actually just check my exposure and also just get my contrast right. Okay, so let's go to the first node and we're gonna go ahead and label this to exposure. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the HDR wheel. I could, this image needs just a little bit more. So I am going to expose this about a half stop more. Come down here. We are just gonna add some contrast right here. Gonna do this nice and simply. And then on our spline editor right here, editable splines, click this handle, and we're just gonna drag this down slightly, bring this up so we don't crush any of the blacks, and just pull this down, and then same thing on this side. We're gonna just pull this up just a little bit, bring this down, and now I can kinda just play with my gamma wheel right here. And that's looking pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and just do a quick before and after right here. That's looking great. And let's go ahead and just kind of fix this white balance a little bit. Again, I'll head back over to the HDR wheel and I'm just gonna pull in just a little bit of blue on that. And add a little bit, just, just a very small touch of green. Those highlights also, we're just gonna push blues into those highlights. And I think that is a really, really great starting point for us right here. Now over on our saturation wheel, what I'm gonna do is just start pushing this up ever so slightly. And you can see that's adding really good looking saturation to our skin tones and even our background over there. I'm gonna push up the gamma a little bit and push up the gain. So the gain goes even, it's gonna be kind of focusing more on like a mid range. Okay, so I pushed up the gamma a little bit and now I'm gonna go to the gain. So if I push up the gamma, you can kind of see where it's playing with. And if I push up the gain, 
you can also see where this is playing with. So it's going to be hitting the kind of these tones faster. And so you can now kind of play with these wheels a little bit more to like be managing how much color is actually going into your image. So I'm going to go ahead and just reset this. Now I'm just going to push some more saturation just like this. Something around there is looking pretty good to me. Then on the DSAT wheel, I'm going to go into here and go down to my lift. And all I'm going to do is just DSAT this just a little bit. And what that's going to do is just take down some of my shadows a little bit and clean up my blacks down here just a little bit also. So now we can really quickly see what that's done. That's added some good saturation and it's cleaned up the background over here a lot. If you look back here, you see a lot of magentas just kind of hanging around on the backdrop a little bit. But with, DSAT, with using this DSAT wheel over here on the lift, that's gotten rid of a lot of those. And let's just go ahead and push this really hard. You can see what that's doing. It's first hitting those values on the lower and high ends. Then it's starting to hit the values on the skin. So if we desat it, if we bring down the saturation from this, we can limit some of the saturation on the background and in the blacks a little bit to give us a really, really good look. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a quick pause for our sponsor. This video today is brought to you by Audio. If you're a creator like me, music and sound design are just as important as creating amazing visuals. That's why I use Audio for my music and sound design. And with Audio's new AI search tool, you can guarantee to find the perfect music for your project fast and easy. Check the description below where you can use my code to get 70% off Audio today. Now, back to the video. Now, here is a really awesome advanced technique for glows. I absolutely love doing this for on all of my images because I think it adds a lot of pop, especially to skin tones and to things like the white background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here, come down to add matte and add matte. And what this is going to do is literally make a matte of this image. So it's going to make a black and white image that I can plug in and use this as an alpha channel on this node right here. Type in glow. I'm going to grab the glow and add this to this mat. And now it's only going to affect the glow in the areas that are high luminance, only in the high ends, and it's not going to be affecting certain areas of like her skin and stuff like that. So quickly go into the glow. And the only thing we need to click is alpha limits effects. I'm going to grab this shine threshold and I'm going to pull it all the way down. And as you can see, we are blowing out our image, but it's also giving us some awesome glow on our skin tones over here. And so now all we need to do, come down to add. I like to set this to screen. And you can see how much that actually limits it. And you can see that it's just adding a little bit of softness to the entire image. Now, you can increase the opacity. You can increase the spread. You can increase the gain. Whatever you want to do now, this is just a way to limit it so it's not so overbearing. Or if you want to, you can keep it as add. And all you have to do is just bring that shine threshold, that shine threshold down a little bit and change with your exposure a little bit also to fix it. But in my case, I always like having it all the way and then using a screen overlay on top of it and then just playing with my opacity right here. So if I want a little bit more to make it look a little bit more dreamlike or if I want a little bit less, but I'm gonna go ahead and just keep it right there in the middle. And I'm thinking that that's looking really good. Maybe go to my exposure, maybe even just push up a little bit more on the gain and just bring down the gamma just a hair. Now that we have all of those set up, now the last thing that I always like to do with a lot of my Color grading is just going to here, type in film look creator, add the film look creator, do a clean slate. And I just use these last little settings just to dial everything in. So as you can see, our image is already looking really, really good, but I want to just dial in a few things. Maybe just bring down the white balance, just a hair, add a small amount of bleach bypass. And what's that going to do is just add a little bit more contrast and limit some of the saturation that we added and I'm just going to barely touch that. And I think that adds a lot to the skin tones and stuff like that. And then we're going to go down, add some bloom for it to soften it up a little bit more. And I always add grain on all of my images and I'm going to do a 65 millimeter for the grain right there. And that's just going to add some texture to the image that we have right here. Perfect. That's looking good. So let's go ahead and just do a quick before and after on all these. I'm going to turn these all off. So here is our original image that we filmed. Um, this is what we filmed on camera. This is what we filmed in camera. 
we went ahead and we did a color manage workflow, which gave it this kind of normalized look. We fixed our white balance and our exposure. We added some saturation to our skin tones. We desaturated the background. And then we added some soft glow to the entire image to soften up the image. And then we added the film look creator as just a last final little tweakings. And of course, one other thing that you can do is just right before the film look creator is add a sharpen node. And I'm gonna go ahead and just sharpen this down just a hair, make sure I'm on sharpen. I'm gonna sharpen it down just a hair and I'm gonna increase this. This is just like a feather for it a little bit. But I like to keep those at 50. And now you can see the image that we have created from this to this. So I hope that wasn't too advanced of a tutorial. If you want this node tree, it'll be in a link in my description below. And uh, if there's anything else that you wanna learn, go ahead and ask. Thanks, love ya, bye.